Welcome to the Vonnie Podcast, the podcast making you invulnerable to the coercion of the state and the servile society. I'm your host, Shane Rayo 2 coming to you from the Veritas node of the Free Republic of Pasnia, uh, the self-liberator's paradise. You can learn more about this burgeoning parallel network by visiting Pasnia, P-A-Z-N-I-A dot com, or uh, I guess just wait a few minutes. Uh, real quick, please do go, uh, do go and check out our catalog over at libertarianattack.com. Uh, in the past week, we listed the, uh, brush cover, or the uh, Brushfire hardcover bundle. Uh, and featuring Brushfire and 2048 in beautiful hardcover format. Uh, there's also the Pain Liberator, Miracle Muscle Pain Relief Spray, uh, a powerhouse containing DMSO, uh, dimethyl sulfoxide, and uh, aspirin in a colloidal silver water base. Uh, it's essentially a fast-acting, localized version of aspirin uh, for common reference, uh, but the DMSO uh, really makes the product as effective uh, as it is. Oh, I've got cats breaking into the studio. <laughs> um, I've got uh, so I've, yeah, I've got amazing feedback on it, and uh, even coming up uh, with an and, and I'm even coming up with an entire paint liberator line. Uh, next coming uh, next coming is icy hot uh, DMSO plus pure menthol crystals, uh, a much better icy hot without the poisons. Uh, kind of a fun a fun science experiment too. Uh, the crystals allegedly require around 100 degrees to dissolve, uh, but a 50/50 DMSO water solution uh, seems to be enough. Uh, no external heat necessary. So. Um, anyway, libertarianattack.com is the site for the general catalog. Uh, libertarianattack.com forward slash pain is a place to go if you want to check out or uh, check out or purchase uh, the pain liberator. Uh, one further, uh, one other health, health liberation, self liberation update. Uh, over at pasnia.com forward slash health, uh, in the very near future, I will be releasing a general health and wellness guide to simplify your journey uh, to health liberation, uh, from oral health to lung health to kidney health to liver health, uh, all the way to general nutrition and additional health modalities. Uh, that could be of service to you. Uh, included are the best quality sources I've found uh, for anything suggested therein. Uh, again, it'll be, it'll be posted at pasnia.com forward slash health, as well as in our Pasnia Committee of Correspondences uh, on Telegram, SimpleX, and uh, Signal. And the final announcement, uh, Vanu Fest 5, the premier gathering of self-liberation, uh, is taking place here at the Veritas Node of the Free Republic from September 30th to October 7th this year. Uh, it's looking to be another amazing event. Uh, come on out. Uh, if you need help getting vetted or have any questions, uh, email coordinator at paznia.com or uh, DM wherever is convenient. Uh, anyway, Kyle is uh, with me again today. Uh, brother, welcome back. Uh, how are things going? Oh, I've been I've been having a hell of a year. Um, let me keep this one short since the last time you had me on. Um, <clears throat> so a combination of local people here as, uh, where I'm at in, in the Austin area, as well as one of my family members, who shall remain unnamed, have been really giving me, uh, eh, they've not been necessarily talking my ear off, but they've been expressing concern about the so-called Project 2025, which is a first, uh, it's a survival society so-called election-related thing. Um, apparently, nobody's actually read the document because it's like 922 pages. And they're all worried that if a certain person gets elected rather than the other one, which, by the way, is my favorite real-life supervillain, um, <laughs> I don't know what to say. I mean, the document itself is longer than the 9-11 than the Commission report. And having gone only uh, perusing through about 43 pages of 922, um, I could see why nobody really read it. Um, apparently, people have been reading clip notes versions, and I don't know if they're taking things out of context, or even if they're not taking things out of context, there might be a certain, shall we say, overblowing of the importance of it. Very, very long story short, um, when I asked a few people, including my one family member, okay, look, and by the way, they're all doing the reformism thing. Sorry, that's the important context. They're all doing reformism. We can't let him be elected kind of thing, right? Mm -hmm. So basically how I ask is that, how serious is this Project 2025 thing? And I even straight up said, is this Red Dawn? Do I have to abandon my life that I've been trying to rebuild and go do what I do best? Is, is, this, is this Red Dawn? If so, yeah, we'll get the guys together and we're, we'll have a rollicking good time, but I'm also going to be not be on the Internet. I'm not going to be using cell phones, and I'm going to be a very, 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 very busy man where I might not survive. So is this Red Dawn, yes or no? Guess what the answer was? <laughs> yes. Uh, the answer, the answer. it's funny you should say that. The answer that they kept saying was, uh, oh, oh, no, no, we just, we just want to do like elections and stuff and, and protests and all that. I'm like, okay, stop bothering me with this. <laughs> now, that means, now that's what I said. Now, 
somewhat more quietly. I have been kind of skimming it. And, and look, guys, here's the short version for anybody who still cares about the first realm to whatever degree. Um, of the first 40 some odd pages, you have to keep in mind, this is a bunch of status right-wingers who are pissed off at the so-called left, and they're just doing kind of their old, uh, same old, same old shit. Okay, the Heritage Foundation, for instance, is involved in this. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, there's some stuff where they're saying some things which are pretty outlandish, even to people who are more arguably moderate or otherwise apolitical, where they're saying things like, we need to outlaw pornography because apparently pornography does not have First Amendment protections, despite the fact that even the status uh, federal courts have said that uh, pornography does have First Amendment protection. Uh, they just straight up lie and say, no, it doesn't have First Amendment protection. And uh, it somehow has something to do with the exploita- sexual exploitation of children. Like, this doesn't make any sense. Like, anybody in the adult, in the adult film industry is knows that the second they even try any of that, you know, they're basically pedophiles and they go to jail real quick. And also the cops don't put up with that. The blood, even the blood, you don't put up with that for two seconds. It's like one of the few unifying things that literally just about everybody kind of agrees on and enforces. Um, but, yeah, but yeah, I mean, aside from some, some one-off things about this and something about drag shows or something, as some sort of like threat to American democracy, like drag shows are a threat to American democracy, something like that. You know, there's some outlandish stuff which, which is almost like a cartoon, something like a cartoon villain would say. But aside from that, like, I'm looking at the rest of this, and it's like, this is a yawn fest. Like, oh, China is a threat. Well, no shit, Sherlock. Also, the sky is, you know, blue, the grass is green, and, you know, and, and West Taiwan is a pain in my ass, too. Because, by the way, that's what we should be calling them if we're going to refer to the Chinese communists. It is West Taiwan, as far as I'm concerned. And if Winnie the Pooh doesn't like it, they can come over here and throw my butt in a cell. Oh, wait, that's right, they can't. So West Taiwan needs to be condescended and talked down to as far as I'm concerned because they're communists. And, and so this, this whole propping up of they're a big threat, they're coming after your children like there's a boogeyman under, under the bed is ridiculous. But unfortunately, that's what these guys in this Project 2025 document are doing is the Chinese are like this big threat. And it, 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 you know what it reminds me of, Shane? What's that? It reminds me of... You remember when the Ukrainian war happened? And the Russians were involved? And yes, there's a lot of bad shit that went on there. But I'm just saying, the initial assumptions were that the Russians were going to kick the Ukrainians' butts. And they were going to win. And it was going to be a quick war. And next thing you know, their equipment is breaking down left and right. Yes, the Ukrainians were being supplied with, with, with money and funding from, you know, you know what. But the point is, the Ukrainians at least kind of held their own with support, Right. And the Russians were having a real tough time. So, yeah, I mean, if anybody wants to condescend down to the Russians and refer to them as, oh, I don't know, the slightly more meaner term of Slavic special ed, yeah. So this whole thing about, oh, these big, you know, superpowers or former superpowers or superpowers that they combine together like they're fucking Voltron. You know, I- I'm, I'm sorry, but I hate to say this, Shane, but I'm inclined to agree with some specific people in the U.S. military that, you know, when it comes to, you know, like ship tonnage and, and other stuff that's more, more of an issue of military science, um, the Chinese and the, and the Russians are, like, not that big a deal, really. If this was to go, like, toe-to-toe and, you know, where there's bombs and explosions and death and injuries and, and property destruction, this shouldn't happen for the reason that it's not going to be a fight. It's not going to be a war. It's going to be a slaughter going to be a massacre. It's probably going to be a war crime. And at that rate, you might as well drive the Canadians into it for those people who know their military history. You know, it's kind of like the joke, you know, it's kind of the joke about, you know, remember the Geneva Geneva Convention? Well, according to the Canadians, it's more like a Geneva suggestion. So how about this? Let's not do war. You know, let's not do war. Let's not support the Joint Chiefs of Staff. Let's not praise the U.S. military as being some sort of, you know, demigod unto itself, let's just kind of acknowledge that maybe the communists are kind of flaky and falling apart, as are the Russian government is, and maybe the most important thing to do is like the more typical Vanu stuff, like we talk about and all that, and, and agorism as well. 
and focus more on trying to get our own lives together and in a lot of ways, you know, have our Vonowitz mini cultures that pull people out of the first realm and hopefully over time that'll kind of uh, uh, <laughs> take the rug out from under the, the federal government basically. And that way, uh, you know, given, given just enough time, you know, it'll kind of, I, at the risk of sounding like Karl Marx, it'll, ironically enough, uh, it'll just say, well, wither away and die kind of thing before it can actually really harm anybody. Because these guys have nuclear weapons, and last time I checked, we don't. So um, that's what I'm kind of getting at. Like this Project 2025 thing, I look at this, and this is, this is a lot of, it, it feels like I'm looking at a creative writing fiction novel. It's just, it's, just, it's just garbage. And so, yeah, I didn't mean to have that be a long prologue, but, you know, I, I just want to say for anybody who heard about this from your own friends and, friends and family relatives, even if you're doing Vanu stuff, or even if you're doing uh, agorism stuff, and just people in the first film you're having your import-export with kind of mention, Project 2025, oh, my God. Look, it's reformism. At the end of the day, the best that I can make is this, is that people like us are not going to get dragged into this. If I'm wrong, then I'm wrong, and I'll eat my, on my own words should that time come to pass. But as of right now, in August of uh, <laughs> 2024, as of this month and year, I'm just not seeing it, not after reading for, for 43 pages. Now, there might be something in the other, you know, 850-plus-some-odd pages, okay, to be fair, but I'm just saying, like, I'm not seeing anything particularly impressive here to be worried about to the extent where, oh, my God, we're going to have to have underground railroads. Because that was something I was thinking about, Shane, is under what conditions would we need to facilitate and kind of grow like an underground railway network, not entirely like what the French Maquis did during World War II and other types of similar people. Like under what conditions do we need to actually get serious and like get people out of the country? Yeah. Yeah, well, I appreciate you taking uh, taking the time to even glance at it because I hadn't uh, really given it, given it any look whatsoever. So I appreciate uh, and, appreciate that assessment. Sure, and I, and I sure, and and I, I think maybe in some roundabout way, maybe I'm kind of helping save you and everybody else some time because it's kind of like you know I'm kind of in between other things. I'm about to start a security job, another security job here soon, and people have been and it's, and it's not just been my one family member or a couple other people locally. It's like it's over and over and over again. This is a drum roll. Uh, even some people at church, sorry, there's another thing. Some people at church were worried about this. And I was like, okay, I will take all of half hour, try to figure, the, or even an hour, and try to figure this out. This is the best I can figure out. <laughs> so in August of 2024, through all 40-something odd pages of this, I'm not seeing anything impressive. If there's something in the other, the other 850, let's, let's deal with that as it, as it comes as it may. But aside from some stupid shit that's very a car cartoon supervillain like, I'm not worried about this. Ten four. Yeah. Yeah, gotcha. Well, uh, I guess the only uh, update, really, really from my end, um, we uh, we weren't able to convene last week, uh, last uh, Sunday, because I was at the uh, Midwest Peer Somebody Fest, um, and uh, you know it was uh, another, yeah, another, another really great year. Um, definitely another great year. It's 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 different than what it was. Um, a lot of talk about it. it's definitely a lot different than what it was and a lot of different people um cause half the people are you know more new people versus you know the initial 50 that 40 or 50 that used to be there but uh <clears throat> you know I, i'm always pleasantly surprised and uh i, I yeah I'm, I'm happy to um you know it's yeah i guess i'm happy to to report just just briefly and it'll start to more come into fruition um you know as the years as the year, as the year goes on but uh um there's a lot of uh <clears throat> I guess some there's there's uh you know f a lot more folks organizing and and you know locally, um, than uh, like actively doing it. Um, whereas like I guess the past few years it's more so been education um, rather than um, people actually being like, hey, um, I've got a freedom cell in such and such um, you know area, um, where here's the stuff we're doing. Let's connect. Um, so that happened a lot more, um, which was really really pleasant to uh, pleasant to see, because um, that's one of the the primary reasons that uh, that uh, we go there is. Uh, one of the ways people can get vetted to come to Veritas is to come meet us um, there, there at the Midwest Peace Liberty Fest. And uh, usually we can get a feel for somebody, we sit there and talk for an hour, and it's like, yeah, okay, yeah, it's, you're, you're, you're legit and you're doing shit. Like, this is, uh, yeah, let's make this happen. Um, so, uh, yeah, lots more of those connections, um, great more, great network, networking possibilities. Uh, and then, yeah, just a, a great time, uh, a great time. And, uh, um, yeah, I mean, we will probably... Um, 
Yeah, we were kind of thinking, um, talking, talk, I guess tossing an idea around not going to the NPL Fest next year and going to uh, MidFest, another festival instead. Um, and I guess that might, that's still, um, nothing's, nothing certain, but, uh, I'm excited to, uh, I mean, I'm excited regardless whether the NPL Fest is, um, can enter the picture too. We, don't, we can only get away from the homestead for so long. Um, you know, um, so we're, we're trying to do that just a couple times a year, um, versus like three or four, um, cause it's a lot to ask my parents to, you know, come up and take care of stuff. Um, but anyway, um, MidFest will be new next year, and that'll be another, I don't even know how many people are at that, hundred, another hundred that I've really never met that really don't come up here much. There's a few that come, come through Pasnia or come through Veritas and go down there, but um, or vice versa, but um, a whole new group of people, um, and uh, yeah, one of the better better freedom festivals out there. So um, yeah, I guess that's really all I have to report on, um, on that front, um, which does feed into, I guess, the, the main topic of discussion today. Um, I'll go ahead and jump forward here. <clears throat> but uh, over the last three episodes, uh, we've revisited a lot of various Vanu shelter and uh, Vanu home bases, uh, most nomadic or especially vulnerable, uh, like Vanu in cities. Uh, while I view the Free Republic of Pasnia as a model to be able to have the security and freedom mobility provides, uh, while also developing more longer-term ways of life and living. Uh, for example, you can have a self-sufficient homestead, uh, a semi-permanent homestead, uh, but with Vanu shelters uh, all over the world in many jurisdictions. Um, or you could be a van nomad and live out of your van, just being off, you know, off grid, and then have. Um, anyway, there's lots of possibilities, which we'll get into. I'm already already adding in tangents. Uh, conversely, you can have the van nomadism, but uh, but also not be solely dependent upon the first realm. Uh, food, fuel, and medicine and services, uh, medicine services, and more uh, can be obtained in the second realm. And uh, with a vast distributed and decentralized second realm network, uh, the prospects are quite grand. Uh, I'd like to take the uh, take some some time today to cover those in detail and uh, to get Kyle's first take on, on the free republic's uh, overall vision uh, and I guess some of the the founding stuff we may not have gone over it before. So um, I'm going to try screen sharing here, um, Kyle. Um, you should be able to see it. I've tested it out here. That's the video doesn't always work, but the screen sharing does. All right, can you see my screen, Kyle? Yeah, I see it. Okay, cool. All right, it worked. Um, so yes, uh, and that will be on, I'm going to go ahead and, uh, get that full screen for the video viewers. Um, so yeah, I'll take, you know, 10 or 15 minutes, just kind of walk through the introductory stuff. Um, it might not even take that long, but, um, anyway, yeah, this is the, uh, the website, Paznia.com. Uh, we'll go through the directory here. I'll talk about a few, few of them, kind of what we're doing. Um, but just general, uh, Paznia free, uh, frequently asked questions. Uh, what does the name mean? Uh, Paz in Spanish means peace, which is the fundamental life principle of Paznia. Uh, it's also the uh, abbreviation uh, for the freedom strategy of building permanent autonomous zones. Uh, what's the difference between Pasnia and freedom cells? Uh, freedom cells are an organizational model where a, group, a small group of individuals, uh, around 10, meets and coordinates for whatever purposes they agree upon. Um, these freedom cells uh, together form a network of sorts, but a less organized and comprehensive vision than that of Pasnia. Uh, further, integration with other freedom cells is wholly op uh, optional, whereas individuals and homesteads that join the PASNI network uh, will do so with the purpose of being a part of it, uh, whether as a node for fellow self-liberators uh, or, say, even just a partner in the seed exchange. Uh, third question, what is security culture? Uh, security culture is the direct application of the right to privacy. Uh, and naturally, the link there for more information is the audiobook for Kyle just below the surface. Um, so we'll spend no more time on security culture. You can go listen to it for free or, uh, you know, Get the book. But uh, why, do they, why do you encourage the use of pseudonyms? Uh, the Servile Society, the first realm, is becoming, becoming more and more unsafe for self-liberators and free thinkers. A pseudonym provides you with the ability to maintain additional privacy and anonymity while still building up uh, a reputation of sorts separate from your chosen or given names. Uh, we're just having different, uh, you know, different, uh, I guess, identities for different interactions online or, or whatever. Um, fifth question, where are they going? Yeah, God <laughs> Right. <laughs> yeah. Um, so f uh, fifth question, what are the requirements for be visiting or becoming a Pasnian? Uh, all visitors must be vetted according to internal procedures at the of the Pasnian Department of Freedom. Uh, anyone can become a, an honorary stakeholder, uh, but founding stakeholders must be vetted and approved. Um, we appreciate the support from anyone, anywhere, but have to do this do things this way to ensure this, uh, these second realms are maintained. Uh, sixth question, do the, uh, do the passports look authentic? Will they work for international travel? Uh, the passports look striking, strikingly legitimate uh, and have been used to purchase age-restricted items in the USSA from a gas station. Uh, and there are a couple of people that really at some point are going to test it out at the Mexican border. So I guess we'll see. Um, that said, they are for culture jamming purposes. No further uses are intended. Um, but we'll appreciate it. Let, let us know. Um, and the seventh question, which I haven't really updated um, since 
I guess July 2021, if it says we're writing this, but what's the current situation at Veritas? Um, yeah, close, getting close to achieving food self-sufficiency. Um, lots of progress in a lot of areas. That's not really updated. I should, it's a good reminder, I need to update that. Um, but yeah, you can, there's uh, episodes of the podcast uh, as of late that we'll talk about what we've been up to. Uh, what's the overall long-term goal for, uh, for Pasnia? Um, long-term goal is an intentional community on the property with the appropriate number of families or individuals, uh, as well as the overarching integration into the second round Pasnia network. Um, and then, yeah, more information, yeah, again, podcasts and what we're talking about today. Uh, what's the significance of the Veritas part of the above question? Uh, Veritas is the first free second realm outpost or city in the, fr- in the first free country. Um, so kind of the same as like the city states, same thing, but obviously a little, little different. Um, how do I build a Pasnia of my own? Uh, declare your independence from whatever authoritarian, ju- authoritarian, ju- authoritarian jurisdiction you find yourself in and start building an autonomous zone upon, upon a foundation of peace and voluntarism. Uh, beyond that, get creative and think big. Uh, the only limitations in this realm are your imagination. Uh, please feel free to use Veritas or other nodes for inspiration. And then just real quick, uh, and I'll stop and, and uh, get your, get any, anything you have to say, Kyle. Um, these are just you know, silly little things. Uh, more about Pasnia. Um, the Free Republic is nestled comfortably in the second realm in what the state of survival society calls Illinois. Uh, the USSA is our closest, our, is our closest neighboring country. Uh, vetting for visits, visits is strict, and most will not be welcome. Uh, again, pa- uh, and then second, the second bullet here, Paz in sp- and, uh, Spanish means peace. Um, which is the fundamental life principle of Pasnia, also building of permanent autonomous zones. Uh, and country facts. Uh, country motto is the self liberator's paradise. And you know, this is uh, whatever, you know, every, you know, quote unquote standard country has. So we have to, obviously had to have one too. Um, country capital is Veritas Pasnia. Uh, country bird is a dove, symbolizing peace. Uh, country animal is the possum, uh, the elim- elimination of parasitism. Uh, country tree is the olive. Country language is Vanu speak. Country Anthem is Crazy Train by Ozzy Osbourne. I'm not going to go into why how that came about uh, on this podcast. Uh, independence from the USSA uh, Declaration uh, was July 4th, 2020, and the Constitution uh, signing was September 26, 2020. Uh, country Currency. Individuals are free to choose for themselves uh, in driving side. Uh, none. We hate roads. Um, so, uh, yeah, I guess that's kind of just the, the, the introductory baseline stuff. Uh, you know, for quote unquote the free country, which is essentially just a parallel network or a second realm. But um, I guess, uh, yeah, anything so far, Kyle? Well, by PAS, I mean permanent autonomous zone, right? Yeah. So, yeah, and, and I guess this would overlap with the notion of like a free port, um, something to that effect and all that. And, yeah. you know, it, it, this is something that a lot of people kind of just misunderstand. Um, because I would assume, unless you say something different, I would assume that Pasnia is a combination physical property that's private property combined with a directory, correct? Uh, yes, a director. Basically, any anything that could be of value to um, to a self liberator, um, even things as basic as like local health food stores where they people enjoy doing business with, um, local local farms, uh, guerrilla gardening plots, uh, van nomad city squat spots. Um, yeah, again, so self-sufficient homesteads, um, uh, pizza pizza joint in Mexico um, that accepts uh, cryptocurrency. Um, there's a lot, I guess there's a lot of variations. Yeah, any anything that could be a value. Um, yeah. Yeah, but like generally speaking, these aren't in like government buildings or no. military bases or even a public highway. It's all on private property anyway. See, can I do a segue and then circle back to this real quick? Sure. Um, so even in the first realm, the private security industry does have a role to play in securing uh, private property to the extent that they are allowed to uh, by the government. There, uh, there is a certain, there are certain uh, security company owners in Texas that I follow on LinkedIn, and for purposes of this, they shall remain unnamed. Mm-hmm. One thing that's come up over and over again is how the Houston Police Department specifically is running an active, ongoing scam. Where they do, where they pretend to offer uh, security services to various clients when they are quote off duty. Uh, however, the problem with that is that peace officers, uh, the, the cops, the bludge, when they are pretending to act as, as private security, first of all, do not have the requisite training. Second of all, they do not have the same delegation of legal authority of the uh, from the property owner to act as what we're known as agents of the owner. They don't have that legal uh, delegation, which is actually very, very important, even for their own stupid law- status laws. 
And then, of course, three, the peace officers uh, are not the, the cops, the bludge. They're not subject to the same insurance requirements and regulatory uh, burdens that actual security companies and their employees are subjected to as per the Texas Private Security Act. So, yeah, the cops up in Houston are running a scam, and they're not the only ones to do it. There's just one particular security company owner that has made it very public and very obnoxious and has shown, like, pictures and photographs and, like, more specific details that shall not be repeated here. Mm -hmm. But the main thing is that, oh, my God, the bludge are running a scam even to the degree where even a first realm security company is like, okay, this is a little too much because it's actually violating the law actually. Now the good part about this and where it circles back to Pasnia is even first realm private security, their major function is to secure private property, right? They enforce trespassing laws um, as appropriate and they act as the agent of the owner and all that kind of stuff. So what's cool about this, what about uh, about Pasnia, is that yeah, if at some point anybody wanted to operate as a uh, second realm security operator, uh, shall we say there's already a client, a potential client list, um, and it you know, sh- should the need arise for whatever reason. Uh, right okay. now, probably most likely not a thing, but if it were to go bigger, and especially uh, if it were to venture, especially into the uh, more urban inner city areas. Uh, even I could foresee a potential uh, market demand for the, those kind of services, of course, which is also something else I'm good at. Sure. Um, but that, that's kind of where I'm coming at it from is, yeah, even the first realm is like, yeah, this is a bit much. We need, we need to, again, private property, private property, private property. Yeah. Yeah, interesting. Yeah, I, I appreciate that. And, yeah, there will cert- certainly be a need. Um, and there already is, it's not, and, you know, for some, for some locations. But, yeah. Um, yeah, not a general need as of yet. I think most of it's probably a uh, self defense. No, but, no, no, um, no, right? Yeah, no, not right now. No. Yeah, no. Even I would say that. Yeah. So, um, all right, very good. Yeah, I, I appreciate that. Um, so I guess just to, to get through some of the introductory stuff here. Um, uh, so if you got, if uh, anyone can go to pasnia dot com forward slash sign and uh, sign the Pasnia Constitution, uh, or the, and the Declaration of Independence. Uh, which I don't read the Declaration of Independence. Uh, you guys can go do that if you want to. But um, the only thing that people, you know, sign to when they, you know, sign digitally, or um, you know, the 30 or so people that came out here for the actual um, dig- uh, physical signing um, at our rebirth of freedom ceremony. Uh, this is all that was agreed to. Uh, one, a respect for and commitment to privacy. The use of synonyms is encouraged. Uh, two, don't hurt people and honor your contracts. Three. Um, a culture that encourages humanity to flourish rather than degrade and regress. And four, a recognition of the important task ahead of us to ensure the continuation of freedom into the future, um, another way for those seeking a way out. Um, and as people here can see here, yeah, if you want to sign it, you can uh, put in your email uh, and then and, you know, leave a message. And then, uh, yeah, there's a lot, of, a lot of signatures here already. And uh, yeah, there might be one or two that I have to uh, get added. So I might be behind on this. I'm not sure. i gotta got to check sometime. Yeah, um, cool. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I guess, uh, um, I guess one que- one question that might come up, um, and I'll just cover it real quick. Um, you know, why, like, the Free Republic of Pasnia, like, why, a, why a new country? Um, well, basically, it's it's it, that's pretty much just like the dressing um, for it. Again, it's more like a, uh, a a network of cooperatives or a parallel network or a second realm, whatever whatever verbiage sounds best to you and you like the best. You can call it whatever you want to. Um, but basically, the the free country, the new, the, it's it's based off of uh, Erwin Strauss in 1969 wrote a book um, called How to Start Your Own Country, uh, and he mentioned one and Vanu was one strategy that he talked about for like three or four pages, which is why I read the book in the first place. But um, yeah, one of the things was a model country, and you can you know make it as you know s- you know s- minimal as you want, or you can actually get go you know go really really far and, and like actually try to like gain legitimacy and um, and go real far with it. Um, so it's, the whole gamut is you know is offered. But uh, the very basic is, uh, you know, just declare your independence, uh, you know, come up with a flag and uh, start selling passports. And everything is like based on that point. It's like souvenir. Um, so, but it's not really it's not really like, I guess, serious in that sense. We aren't uh, so, like I, I haven't petitioned the United Nations or anything like that. It's a, um, obviously built on the principles of honor and security culture. So making ourselves like openly known like that uh, would be downright retarded and contradictory. Um, I guess to the principles of the of the country, the so-called country. So yeah, I guess that's just a a quick explanation on that. Um, yeah, and now I guess to, to some more substantial stuff, um, like uh, 
I won't go through every I won't go through all these all these pages, but um, I will highlight a uh, few of our ongoing projects uh, for our various passing departments. Uh, the passing department of transportation. Right, I'll go ahead and open that, um, and then uh, we'll get the, which is more so just the passing. Oh, well, I guess yeah, we'll just we'll skip that one for now. Um, we'll just go with the passing in our department, um, and then yeah, we'll do these few. To give everyone a taste, and then yeah, you can go and, and check out more. We've got Pasadena Free Press, which is uh, um, we come out with our own like uh, announcements um, on like a uh, creation of departments, and again, a lot of it's culture jamming too. So the Free Country gives you a lot of um, a lot of room for culture jamming. Um, like General Willie um, is my is my is my goat. Uh, he's got huge horns, and I have a picture of him on top of a bale. So he's general of the Pasadena Army. Um, but. Uh, <laughs> He's probably the more he's probably the most competent general I've ever come across. Yeah, probably. So. I mean, he won the Great Battle of Bosnia in 2020. So, um, I mean, if you win a war, then you can't really oh, yeah. talk shit. So, he won the war. Um, <laughs> so, uh, anyway, I guess the, the first one I'll just touch on real quick. Okay, yeah. So, if uh, this is the uh, um, PAS 20, file 210207. Um, and this was uh, drafted by uh, the pseudonymous Josiah Warren. Um, basically stating, you know, what the the creation of the funds, how much money is going to be initially funded, things that could be used on, um, how to, you know, how to make donations to the fund, and you know how to, you know, ask for donations to the fund, um, and that people can donate to these things. But anyway, I'll back up to the Monero one. Um, <clears throat> yeah, basically just laying out the Monero General Fund is for mutual aid fund developing a second realm. Um, any vitalist self liberators encouraged to apply for funds. We do have um, some available right now. We always we you know we donate to a lot of different projects. So um, people already know reach out and we'll make it happen if we can. Um, privacy focused, uh, not intended for the funding of any state political activities, political crusades or state activities, political crusades, or as a will for program or crutch. Um, and then yeah, that's basically basically it for that. Um, <clears throat> and uh, next, passing Department of Health and Wellness, which is I guess our other. Um, pretty substantial um, department, um, especially as of late, which maybe I'll be able to talk about at some point, at least generally. But um, so, yeah, obviously, um, when the big thing in 2020, there's talk about the immunity passports, um, we obviously had to have our own. So from the Office of the Pasadena Department of Freedom's Health Ministry, by the power granted to the ambassador of the Pasadena Health Ministry, the carrier of this digital passport has been recognized as immune from whatever they may happen to need immunity from. Valid until 3 3 33 33 um, signed by Dr. Naomi Gather, who is the dog. Um, and then obviously you got to let people know there's fluoride in the tap water. So I made sure to do that. Um, <laughs> and then we get serious with it. Um, it's well, yeah. So a, a great quote from Dr. Je Dr. W George W. Carey from the late 1800s. It is a well-known physiological fact that the blood is the basic material of which the human body is continually builded as is. So as is the blood, so is the body as is the body. So is the brain as is the brain. So is the quality of thought. As man is builded, so thinks he, end quote. And yeah, problem. It's, if there's anything that's become blatantly evident in the past few years, that Babylon Pharmaceuticals is not here to help you. Uh, the solution is assisting self-liberators, Venuans, and Pasnians, and restoring balance within and, with, within and without, utilizing tried-and-true methodologies, uh, and seeking balance and incorporating every aspect of the human experience, the spiritual, mental, uh, and physical. And of course, the, the big feature here at, uh, um, at the Health and Wellness Center is actually behind me now. Um, that, that beautiful thing, uh, it's the AquaCure, um, courtesy of uh, George Wiseman um, over at uh, uh, eagle-research.net. But, uh, um, yeah, amazing stuff. Uh, basically, I'll just read a brief description here. Um, yeah, molecular hydrogen, electrically expanded water, and Brown's gas. Uh, and tuned to whatever frequency you desire. Um, so just like we've got a Rife machine back there, which um, using frequency for, um, you know, the quote-unquote healing of, of disease. Um, you can use that the same frequencies, um, basically charge your water to it. Um, it's yeah, pretty amazing stuff. Um, and uh, other notable features found at the Health and Wellness Center, um, high quality animal nutrition, uh, red light therapy, uh, which I jokingly call this the Pasadena Red, Pasadena red Light District because a lot most podcasts um, I have like three or four red lights on, but not so much today. Um, or as apothecary, uh, or as handcrafted creations, uh, some formulations made with uh, medicines grown here at uh, Veritas. Uh, medicinal medicinal mushrooms, mushroom foraging. Uh, certain mushrooms, uh, whether medicinal, uh, like tea, spiritual, or culinary, have some amazing properties. 
Uh, right frequency healing uh, as bioelectric beings. Uh, frequency can serve to put us in a state of imbalance uh, or once or one of imbalance or one of balance. Uh, this is the you know the focus on the latter, which again is that thing back there, which I still have to get a um, a frequency generator that works because um, that one will not connect to any computer. Uh, any Windows um, Windows OS uh, or operating system from 2007 to 2000, um, I guess the you know Windows 10. Um, I had a virtual machine. I tried every single one of them, and it didn't work with any of them. So I was very thorough. Um, God bless virtual machines on Ubuntu um, on the ghost pad. But uh, um, next, Dr. Ray Pete, focus philosophy, and this is kind of my focus. Yeah, my focus right now. Um, yeah, uh, youth hormones, thyroid, thyroid function. Um, yeah, et cetera. Uh, other focuses include Rosicrucian spiritual sciences, which overlap a lot with the, uh, um, I guess, the health and wellness realm, uh, homeopathics, and the use of dimethyl sulfoxide DMSO uh, as a carrier into cells and uh, all around miraculous healer. Uh, I mentioned the pain liberator before. That's, um, you know, featured there. And then, yes, thank goodness, there's a picture. I mentioned the picture of Willie. That was um, the picture after the Great Battle of Pasnia in 2020 uh, when he was victorious and he was addressing his, his, uh, I guess his uh, his army. So, yeah, yeah. very brave heart. Yeah, <laughs> certainly. He has a Twitter account too. I'd recommend people check it out. It's it's uh, comical. Um, but yeah, or the spot the carrier. There's a the rifle machine, and then here's some some mushrooms that were foraged. Um, and then yeah, we've obviously got more we're we're, we're working towards, uh, and lots more um, that isn't mentioned there. Uh, I suppose one more thing, and then I'll I'll kind of open it up. Um, open up once more. Um, but this is actually a part of, which I guess I could talk about this after, but um, Pasnia List is uh, what this is called, or where uh, this can be located. Um, but Pasnia List is the Craigslist for the Craigslist of the Second Realm. And essentially, uh, if you go to pasnia.com forward slash list, um, that part was Pasnia Department of Transportation. Um, so this is one department um, when we have a map um, and directory, which we have one for the, it's a, the vetted ones available now um, to those with a uh, login information. Um, once then the map is filled out, um, you know, it could be, uh, you know, trading potentials, um, traveling nomads could, um, you know, facilitate trade routes throughout. Um, self-sufficient homesteads can get their goods, you know, throughout, um, you know, just facilitating trade, um, a trading, a trade network of our own, I guess, uh, essentially. So that is uh, that can be found here. Um, there's no post now, and, and I, I eventually want. Um, there's a, it, I don't think it'd really be that hard, but it's just another another project that requires you know time and focus and you know some funding that we you know that's it's not the highest priority I think at right at this point until the map gets more fleshed out. Excuse me, but uh, there are um, like those logistics app like uh, not even Uber, but just think like Uber for like for, for like drivers, um, and it's just like. Uh, um, a, a phone app and you can probably you can probably buy like the base for that and then just modify a few things um, and not even have to build out the entire thing from scratch so that's kind of silly um, and there might even be a better solution than that but anyway this isn't the permanent solution for the department of transportation but um, if you want to go drop something there now you're, you're more than welcome um, Pasnia list is open to um, anyone uh, anyone to post so <clears throat> um, now I guess uh, let me see if there was anything um, nope. And then we'll switch over to Pasnia Services and Marketplaces. Uh, um, next book, Kyle, anything? Um, got any, any comments so far? Uh, the only thing I was really going to say is that, you know, I, I love the satire, the culture jamming of essentially creating what appears to be <clears throat> like a free, again, like a free port combined with a directory but portraying it as if it were a government with the, with these, you know, uh, administrative agency uh, departments and all that. But yet, it's, it's, it's very tongue-in-cheek in a lot of ways, like the one about the ghost being the, you know, your, your general and all that. Like, that, that kind of stuff is perfect. Um, <laughs> that, that's kind of the attitude you need to have, uh, as well as with some things. It's just kind of like, if people can't tell the can tell the difference between fiction and reality, like when we're being satirical versus being serious and all that, then they're not the people we need. Um, there are some people that just, in the first realm anyway, that I've come across where they have a very difficult time. There were some people I came across that thought that fucking Captain America, Steve Rogers, was a real guy. They did not conceive of that he's a fictional character based in the you know, Marvel uh, comic books and related movies. Hmm. They yeah. thought he was a real guy. 
because I remember one person saying, oh, did he meet Trump yet? Meaning Captain America. Like, what the fuck? Like, what planet? Are you, like, does nobody, like, do you not have a sense of, are, are, you, are you going through, like, a mental health challenge of derealization? Like, you can't tell what's real anymore? I think I heard somebody's feelings that day, but I didn't see where I'm going at it from. It's just, this is just something I keep going through, going over again and again and again, where people are just like, they're night or not getting the joke, or they think I'm kidding when, when I'm speaking seriously. And it's like, look, if you can't, you know, if you have no discernment, and of course, you know, sometimes we get, you know, we all get confused and then we ask questions, hey, don't just want to double check. That sounds like a joke. Did you, were you serious? Or the other, like, that's one thing, right? That's asking for clarification. But if you don't have a basic level of discernment, I don't know what to say to you or anybody else. So anyway, yeah, I just wanted to compliment them. So like, this, this, this is a great piece of art in a lot of ways. I, I, I really enjoy it. Hey, thank you, man. Appreciate that. Um, uh, yeah, okay, so um, we don't have a whole lot of time. But hey, I guess we're, we're, we're going to get through. Uh, it's it's, it's going to work. Uh, it's going to work. There's actually not that much more. So um, the first one I can't actually show on uh, uh, can't actually show on uh, the stream be, or on the video because yeah, it's, a vetted map, it's a vetted map directory. directory. Yep, not going to show that. So what I'll just yeah. say, what I'll just say is um, at, at this point, um, <laughs> yeah, at this point you'll just have to uh, you know wait until the public one's out if you don't have access or if you uh, do have access uh, you've can go check it out um but i guess the only things i'll mention now yep. is uh um there was one service that you thought would be valuable and i, I definitely agree uh but uh um, we need listings for mail forwarding services so that is uh you know if you're looking for ways to help self-liberators um that is uh you know one possible um one possible avenue but uh kyle um you got kind of guess i'm gonna to jump in there with no no i was about to kind of explain where, why very briefly um yeah, the reason we're not going to show the, the and Shane's not going to show the uh, <laughs> the directory is that that's a security culture issue. Um, you know, I mean, you wouldn't just hand over the Death Star plans to like the Rebel Alliance or whatever. I'm not saying we're the evil empire. I'm just saying, like, who's ever got the sensitive data? You wouldn't just hand that over to your opposition. Same thing here. So uh, yeah, so it's not it's not an issue or a question or even a ploy at being coy, which rhymes. It, it's more like having some basic common sense, right? If you need to convey some varying level of sensitive data to someone, you don't just spew it out, you know, left to right. In fact, even in the first realm, the fucking federal government is not like whistleblowers. They have different levels of how they classify uh, intelligence or whatever. So, if, so in the words of Albert J. Knox, if our enemy, the state, is also having various different types of classified information and and, and various themes, and uh, T uh, or the one thing that I still might try and go get, uh, the TSSCI, or whatever the acronym, Top Secret uh, Compartmentalized Sensitive Information, or whatever it is. Um, allegedly the highest security clearance you can get, allegedly. Um, you know, if they can do all the secret squirrel stuff, why can't we? I'm just saying, you know, if, it, yeah. if it's good for the goose, it's good for the gander, right? If they can have secrets, we can have secrets. It is not a crime to have a secret. So the security culture stuff is, is that. And unfortunately, the directory would be kind of like something approaching a professional secret. We don't want, you know, uh, let's say John and Jane Doe's uh, apothecary services that are for the second row people to basically get uh, potential. It's not even raiding. It's not even yeah. raided or even dumped. But like, but like harassed. Let's say harassed by a bunch of you know, protester types that don't like their particular services, okay? We don't want to reenact a controversy of, like, you know, Christian bakers or something, okay? Oh, no. we don't, we're not in the business of doing that. We're, we are far past that. We're trying to build a new society from within the shell of the old, okay? And part of that is also having a level of discernment. And, you know, not all truths need to be said. And that's it. Yeah. Yeah, and there are. I mean, there's obviously additional security culture um, protocols and such. Um, but uh, um, yeah, anyway, we won't, we won't have to go into that um, that right now. But uh, anyway, yeah, uh, well said. Yep, that's. Uh, I'm glad you you explained to uh, uh, elaborate on that. Um, definitely, definitely important. Uh, definitely important. So yeah, I mentioned Pasnia list, which uh, is the Craigslist of the second realm. Um, the categories for posting, arbitration and security, crypto anarchy for sale, health and wellness, help wanted, homestead or contractor, homestead or contractor services, uh, looking for work, uh, Pasadena Department of Transportation, 
uh, Pasnia Seed Exchange and Proxy Merchant Services. Um, so, uh, yeah, if you want to go post, Pasnia.com forward slash list. Um, anyone out there? Uh, next one is Pasnia.chats, our own host, our own, uh, our, our own uh, Jitsi server, which at the present moment is not working. Um, that's going to be one of the next big uh, department, department of Technology projects, which um, I actually need to get a Department of Technology page added and added to the uh, directory on the front page because I do not have that ready yet. Um, but yeah, that'll be one of the, the bigger one of the bigger projects, Pasnia.chat. So at some point, um, yeah, at some point we'll have our own like basically. Um, super powerful um super power powerful server hosting jitsi um that you know anyone can go to passing dot chat you know start their own start their own chat and um and uh yeah it's it's our, it's, it's a good deal uh, a good deal for sure uh, and it worked well for it worked really well really well for about a year and it, it had about one eighth of the of the suggested ram uh to run jitsi so the fact that it ran that long uh, i'm not even sure what the issue is but um, it lasted for like a year, um, and it worked pretty well. So um, we're going to go for six gigabytes of RAM, uh, 6x the, uh, the the capacity or capability. So, um, yeah, keep a, keep a lookout for that, folks. And um, I guess the other couple of Department of Technology projects that are, com- that are uh, you know, coming forth um, very soon, uh, the Pasnia Library, uh, which will be kind of our own, like, uh, um, it'll be a private torrent system first. Um, everything starts with the people that, you know, uh, support and join the network, um, the vetted folks. Um, so it'll be kind of like our own private torrent system. Uh, think like podcasts, um, documentaries, books, um, replacements for like Spotify, so you can get music on there. Maybe movies, um, podcast. You know, yeah. Again, um, anything. You know, books. Anything that could, that could go on there. Anything that could be of value, um, and hosted on something like Nextcloud server or something like that. Um, <clears throat> and uh, I guess the the final thing is uh, obviously as part of the tar- depart- department technology um, is our uh, you know infrastructure um, and with uh, you know, as uh, as Jamin put it, uh, you know, as you know, as we're bas- we're basically a dispersed tribe at this point. So um, we have to va- we have to make sure we're using you know not only secure software and you know um, and that, but uh, hardware. So um, the Go system uh, is Jamin's kind of overarching plan that he's building out. He's building out beta testing in his, at his own infrastructure. But uh, um, yeah, more people in the network are getting Ghost phones, um, Ghost pads, and other Ghost devices, um, things like that. Um, and uh, that's that's definitely a very very important and critical part and uh we're going to try to enable that um and host uh, you know as much as we can you know as much as we can make it easy to replicate um as uh yeah as uh as the you know as the network grows so um there's a there's a lot um yeah a lot in the digital technological realm and i won't bore bore people um with that we have our own passing department of technology meetings um <laughs> they're uh passing stuff realm assemblies so we'll uh we'll leave uh leave leave a lot of that there um Next events at the free, uh, the free Republic here. Events at uh, Veritas. Um, obviously, there's Bonnie Fest, but there's um, a, no- a number of other gatherings throughout throughout the year. Um, this year we had the Great Passing and Eclipse. Uh, there's a volunteers- vol- Volunteerism Day weekend gathering, um, Agorism Day weekend gathering, Bonnie Fest, um, anything like that. Uh, I guess there's there's uh, yeah lots of uh, lots of events. So uh, yeah, if uh, you're vetted and you want to come out, um, that's uh, updated as soon as we can, as early as we can. Passing.com forward slash Bonnie Fest. Um, and uh, yeah, if you need help getting vetted, just reach out coordinator at Passing.com, or uh, you can uh, um, just uh, you know direct message me, private message me on uh, whatever platform is convenient. Um, and I guess future visions. Uh, I mentioned our own logistics and transportation network, uh, serviced by nomads. Uh, who plan their routes around self-sufficient homesteads. Um, <clears throat> so I guess another thing, another feature of the, the Mapping Directory, even if you aren't really a traveler, even if you're not a nomad, uh, but get, getting yourself on the vetted Mapping Directory enables homesteads um, to bring their markets to them, um, vetted markets even. So that's one great thing about, uh, you know, our events. You know, we sell a lot of canned goods. Um, just, like at this, t- this time of year, there's a lot of uh, fresh produce, a lot of squash, um, et cetera. Um, there's all sorts of stuff. So, um, yeah, you can bring them. You can basically just, you know, bring bring markets to you, um, essentially. Uh, so future services for the Pasnia map. Uh, we mentioned this, the mail forwarding or mailbox services. Um, this is one of those things where if you're looking for, you know, ways out of the first realm, um, these are opportunities you kind of need to look for. Like, how, how can you serve your fellow, uh, your fellow self-liberator, per se? Um, and uh, um, that was one that Kyle brought up. And I was like, well, shit, of course, it, that is uh, uh, important to get added. So, um, finally, calls to action. 
Um, Reinsign the Pasnia Constitution, which is at uh, pasnia.com forward slash sign. Um, you can add a location or locations to the Pasnia Map and Directory, uh, pasnia.com forward slash join. Um, and again, that's uh, so sufficient homesteads. If you have a, a local health food store that you really like going to, the lady's really nice, or um, she might skirt something for you or sell something under the table, something like that. Um, you know, people that we like to work with, um, you can you can get them added. Uh, you know, their places uh, you know added on the map. And obviously, don't mention the you know the, the any of that stuff. But just like oh, that's a local health food store. They have like really great uh, you know local dairy or something. Whatever whatever it happens to be. Um, grill gardening plots, um, Bay Nomad City squat spots, um, yeah, lots of possibilities. Um, check out and make your first listing at passing.com forward slash list. Um, and then, uh, again, come out to Veritas for one of our gatherings in the second realm. Um, Vani Fest is, uh, the biggest, biggest one, and I've gotten a lot, I've actually gotten some, some additional confirmations, uh, and it's going to be, uh, one hell of an event, um, that, uh, I encourage everyone to try and get out to. Uh, it's happening September 30th to October 7th. Um, so yeah, Kyle, that was uh, my spiel is kind of gu- is kind of done, I suppose. I recommend people go to passing.com and just you know take a real good look um, and look under the surface of the culture jamming. Um, it's a good time. So Kyle, um, yeah, my part's done. I, I guess uh, your overall overall overarching thoughts and uh, maybe maybe additional suggestions or uh, yeah, whatever you got. I, I I love the overall concept. People just check it out. That's all I got to say for now. Cool. All right. Well, I guess um, that was kind of the the outro for this one. So um, I will uh, um, we'll, we'll we'll end it there. Um, thanks so much for tuning in, guys. Uh, until next time. Cheers. Hello, friends, fellow self liberators. Doctor Gatherer here, coming to you with a health and wellness message. The Pain Liberator Miracle Muscle Pain Reliever is now back in stock at LibertyUnderAttack.com. For your basic aches and pains, to more extensive injuries, and even pains like headaches or migraines, the Pain Liberator is here to liberate you from discomfort. The Pain Liberator is a 20% DMSO, dimethyl sulfoxide, slash 80% colloidal silver water base, blended with enough aspirin to provide 30 milligrams of aspirin per spray. Beyond just pain relief, All three of these main ingredients provide enormous benefit to the body in general. DMSO also helps to bring the aspirin and colloidal silver into the skin for maximum bioavailability. Individual benefits include Colloidal silver is antibacterial, antifungal, used for sore throats, sinus problems, tooth infections, and candida overgrowths. DMSO has over 40 known pharmacological properties, helps with acne, Heals shingles, is radio slash EMF protective, painkiller, and heals stroke and heart attack damage. Aspirin is one of the safest, cheapest miracle drugs in existence. Searching PubMed, it assists with basically every disease or imbalance, from muscle pain to reversing cancerous tumors and everything in between. Spray directly on head for headaches. The Pain Liberator is available via Liberty Under Attack publications. Just visit libertyunderattack.com slash pain to place your order today. PayPal, Bitcoin, and Monero accepted. For Monero, email shane at libertyunderattack.com. The Pain Liberator, Miracle Muscle Pain Reliever, a Pasnia Department of Health and Wellness Creation. libertyunderattack.com slash pain. Liberty Under Attack Publications, privacy-focused publishing. Are you an author looking to get your message out, but still desire to maintain your privacy from a servile society publisher, Amazon, etc.? In addition to normal publishing services, Liberty Under Attack Publications now offers privacy-focused publishing. We list the book on our Liberty Under Attack Publications account, and pay you Amazon commissions in Bitcoin or Monero. It's really that simple. Cost, $250 one-time proxy merchant fee. Note 1, 
when balance hits $50 US, commissions will be paid. Note 2. Fees may be waived or reduced if other publishing services are required. There's no projected end to this service and we will always make sure to fulfill our obligations and to pay you what's rightfully yours. Though, if 10 years down the road, our publishing service shuts down like Loom Panics and Paladin Press before us, it is what it is.